interesting when you think about the books that form you. You know, it's always a question people like to write writers. There's an irresistible urge to pose and to say, oh, you know, I was formed by, you know, Proust and, and the highest works of Western literature. But I think, you know, the works that actually form us, because we are too unsophisticated as early readers to know the high from the low or the good from the bad, is that you latch on to things that speak to you. So in my case, you know, it was these novels by Mary Renault, which conflated two things that would become sort of core elements of my identity as a writer, you know, which is homosexuality and ancient Greece. And here she was writing these novels about people that I understood to be homosexual people in a setting in which that was not a controversial issue. And so I think it had to have really had this extraordinary effect on my development. I found these books when I was 12 or so. In those days, this is the early 1970s, you know, there were no cultural external correlatives for what I was experiencing emotionally. I inhabited those books in a way I don't think I would have inhabited certain books if I had been a straight boy reading about straight romance for the first time, because there was nothing else. There was literally nothing else. And I really think, you know, this piece that I've written in some way is a piece about the way you get formed by books when you're too young to know any better. I learned a lot from critics when I was a teenager, when I was first becoming a reader of criticism, of thinking about theater and dance and movies and as objects of potential intellectual activity. And so I never resented, you know, people with authority and erudition. My natural posture was, I'm the empty vessel and they can fill me. The minute at which you stop being able to learn is the end, I think. And I had great, funny, weird mentors in my life. You know, I learned a lot from a, a elderly, this is going to sound like something I made up, but it's not, an elderly French countess who I boarded with when I was an undergraduate. She was not a book person at all. She was incredibly sophisticated in another way, though, because she was incredibly open to everything. At the age of 70, always willing to listen to a new rock and roll band and go out dancing and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, that's real sophistication. You know, it's not being over everything, but being open to everything and making your judgments based on that. My father was really the first critic in the family. Because he was an autodidact, he had his own crusty, sort of against the grain take on a lot of things because he had thought them through for himself. Like he didn't like Odysseus, thought he was a liar and a cheat, which he is. So you get these kinds of reactions and you have to confront them. And that's a very good exercise. I think in my criticism, I'm reproducing this struggle, you know, that I learned about from my father. You know, the criticism should be the enactment of the drama of how you arrived at your response to a work using your various tools, but ultimately it has to be you. It has to be purely you. And so you have to screen out everything you've heard, everything everybody else is saying. So I think in that sense, that's a kind of pure undertaking. And because the process of writing is one by which I figure out what the conclusion is that I'm striving towards, I think you feel that in the pieces.